obviously you guys had joined the Big East there for, for a second. This might have been a conference game back in the day. I, I know you followed it from afar because you, you weren't necessarily here during all that, but how, how content are you in the Mountain West, you know, the way that things have shaped up right now and, and mm -hmm. not having to go East four times a year for games? Yeah, the travel is obviously a big thing. You know, that was one, um, you know, I wasn't here when it was all kind of going down, but knew about it. Right. Um, obviously, travel is a big thing. You know, quality of, you know, the student athlete and the welfare and all that. You got a lot of games where you're going to be traveling back and forth and getting back late. Um, Mountain West Conference, uh, location, travel, all that. I mean, it couldn't be better set up for us. Uh, and so, I mean, it makes complete sense. You know, I don't know everything that went into um, both decisions and all that. It's always, there's a lot more than I know on that. But as far as where we're at right now, it's very good. You get access to California. Mm -hmm. um, you don't quite get to Texas, but, but you're down in New Mexico and things like that. Is it, is yeah. it good for recruiting better than maybe playing in Florida and, and you know, East Coast? Canada? It is because we're hitting most of the areas we recruit. And bottom line is, you know, when it gets to recruiting, families want to watch their sons play. So if you're within range where they can get there, drive there, you know, be there for a game, that's obviously huge. I mean, that's, that's a big part of recruiting is having a chance to watch, you know, your son play. And getting to those games, if we were going back east quite a bit, it would be very difficult for our fans, number one, but for families, too, and where we recruit regionally to get over there to those games. Cancel player interviews today. What, uh, what was the reason behind that? Short week. You guys are busy. Um, a lot going on. Just want to get these guys, let them get to bed. Um, just worry about what we have to do. What, uh, what does it seem for your team two days of practice? Uh, good. You know, those guys that came out today was good. You know, energy's been good. We we just came off a really physical game, so you worry about, you know, a little bit of a letdown after that because you played a team uh, like Colorado State. And so, you know, we need to get fresh. I think today was good. They had good energy. They didn't act like that. You know, those are things I think about as a coach is are we fresh? Are we ready to go? At the same time, have we gotten the reps that we need to get, you know, to be prepared for this game? And I think we're doing that. You know, we're getting this. We'll have an early morning practice tomorrow. Uh, so guys got to get situated tonight. And then we're on the plane. they got a lot of time to think, just mental prep for the game. And then we'll relax while we're there and, and uh, be ready to rock and roll. And it's an early game, too. There's not that lay around time, too, of just recovery on a Saturday as well, which we haven't been in for the last two games. Do you get anybody, you were talking about Wednesday, Thursday, before you know if you guys are going to play, any more updates there in terms of who's going to be No, um, still waiting on that. Tomorrow's the last day. I mean, wait till Thursday, and you always give players a chance. And, and the one thing, you know, those guys, they know the policy around here. And, and whether a guy wants to wait till Thursday, if they practice on Thursday and they practice well on Thursday, and we'll, and we'll rock and roll with them and all that. But uh, we're not to Thursday yet, and the, and the time's winding down. So in the morning, we'll know. Have you guys done anything to emphasize, you know, early mornings with these kids since the, you know, early morning kickoff this week? Breakfast. Yeah, <laughs> we got breakfast for them in the morning. You know, no, we haven't. I mean, tomorrow will be the closest thing that we have a chance to do that. We have meetings at 7 a.m. Uh, we practice at 8:10, so it's earlier than the game. But you know, we're out there practicing, so that'll be the closest thing that we've done. And we actually did that for the old Miss game as well. So we've had two practices like that. Um, and that's, that's about as good as we can get at this point. So what are your scheduled guys on game day then? Uh, we'll wake up at uh, 7.45. Uh, we got breakfast at 8.10. And then we have uh, a clap session at 9.10, highlight video. And then we start making our way to the, to the game at that point. And so we're there a couple hours early, get out there and get loose. And then we're playing at, at noon. So you, things go very quick. You ever have an 11 a.m. game at Texas or Arkansas State? Uh, we did have an 11 a.m. game. We played Iowa State at 11 a.m. And uh, we actually played one of our better games um, that we played. But got up, pregame meal is breakfast. And then, you know, basically at that point, you're boom, you're rolling. Uh, it's interesting because you talk to the players. And I think the last two games, I think our guys are looking forward to having an early game. I think they're tired of laying around all day. They want to go play. And also understand the travel of, of getting back and forth because of doing that at, at Old Miss. Um, you know, when the game is over, that obviously makes a difference as well. What's the clap? Uh, just to <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about it. Right. <laughs> it's, it's football thing. Don't worry about it. This group of guys has not had a whole lot of success away from Boise the, la the last couple of years. Is it just go out and win games to get that confidence, or is there something you guys can do to help them get the confidence so they can go out and, and roll into a visiting city yeah. and get the win? We got to win. I mean, we just, we just talked about it. I mean, what's what's the identity of our team? We played a road game. We played at home. We won. We're one and one. 
uh, you know, can we go out on the road? And, you know, can we go there and play? Can we play on, on a long road trip? Uh, we need to do that. We're going to play on the road after this as well. So, to me, it's we've learned something from Old Miss from being on the road that has to apply into this game. And if it doesn't, then you know we're going to have problems. Bottom line. So, uh, very similar trips. We should know how to how to respond other than the early game. And then the way we played last week, can we carry that through? Be more consistent in this game than we were last week. Can we get better? It's all those things, but we got to find a way to win on the road. We haven't proved anything that way. You guys have already played two pretty physical football games. Missed four out of, I think, by the end of this week, we'll miss four of the first 14 days of school. How sort of mentally, physically taxing has this opening stretch been yeah. for the team? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, from an academic standpoint, you know, it's difficult on those guys. You know, we, we got guys staying here till, you know, 9, 10 o'clock at night studying, trying to catch up, you know, and stay on top of their classes and, and uh, you know, also communicate with their professors. They'll have work on the plane. They'll do that. You know, they get caught up just a little bit. Um, and that's hard. You know, we'll use that time as much as we can. But, you know, it's a credit to these guys. They're, they're doing everything they can academically. And it starts to pile up. I mean, you're into week, you know, three and four and all that. And here comes the first test and quizzes and things like that. You're getting grades back. And then on top of that, there's more film to watch football-wise. So it starts to pile up. And what we talk about is just being organized. Okay, what, what are you doing this week? And we try to sit down and lay that plan out on Sundays with these guys uh, to help them out. But it is what it is, and we got to deal with it. And you know what? We're going to school, and we're playing football, and that's what we're doing. First time we talked to you, you didn't know which quarterback was going to be in there for UConn. Now one guy's retired because of the concussions. How, how do you see that, that, that uh, the dynamic and what the second guy was able to do? Well, you know what? Surprisingly enough, I bet he'll be better. You know, I mean, it's... You had two quarterbacks, and you probably have a little bit of a controversy there, and now you got one guy, unfortunately, you know, I don't like that, that a guy can't play because of that type of injury or, or having the premature, you know, leaving the game prematurely, but it's probably dwindled it down to one guy and made it easier on the team. This is what we're doing. We can game plan for one guy, hone in on him. So I anticipate them to be better on offense because of it. And bottom line is they're not going to change their schemes and what they're doing. Uh, they're probably going to be better at them, and I think he's – in my opinion, be excited to go out there. Hey, I'm the guy, and this is my show, and, and he's going to go probably play that way, and we've got to be ready for it. You said that uh, sometimes injuries can particularly take their toll at practice because you can't have a guy out there for 24 straight snaps or whatnot. So dealing with some of those injuries that you have, especially in the secondary, have you guys found a nice, efficient rotation at, at practice this week? Yeah, you know, uh, Coach Brown and Coach Ace, they've done a good job with those guys. You know, Chaz has been in there um, to help out. A couple of our, our other DBs, freshman DBs, have helped out a little bit. Um, a little bit more mental in some areas with some walkthroughs and, and things like that. So you start thinking about legs and reps. We've done a normal week of practice. We just had a few guys fill in uh, that probably won't play in that position, but it gives the defense and the rest of the guys around them the chance to go out there and execute their assignments and save some legs with certain players. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if you can say it enough. Is there anybody in, in the secondary you might travel that you haven't traveled before or anything that you might consider? Um, We'll probably travel Eric Yates, you know, one of our freshman DBs. And, you know, that way we just have somebody, you know, worst case, I mean, that's, that gets down to E, you know, situation and all that. But you want to have it. Um, you know, we travel guys when we get in those type of situations like that. You never know. He's a walk on. Is he is that impressive with them in practice and, and things like that? Yes. Yeah, he's a, he does. He does a good job. He's a smart player. Um, he's, he's competitive. Uh, he knows the defense, obviously. So uh, that helps. But, you know, he's one of those guys that, yeah, I mean, everything that we've asked him to do through fall camp, um, he's done. And if necessary, if we got into a situation like that, you know, then he understands and we understand that, you know, we got to go out there and play. Um, don't anticipate to get into that, but you never know. And, you know, our job is just to prepare for, for situations like that, and we hope it doesn't happen. Do you have any other true freshman mark to play at this point other than Dylan? No. No. I, I think uh, – you know, Jeremy, we talked about him, um, not unless we, we have a situation uh, where it requires him to, to come in and play. But other than that, DSG is the only guy. He gets to bring 70 again?